you've been following me for a while, then you're probably very familiar with my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. It's been 10 months since I first set it up and it's been five months since my last update video. I can't believe it's already been 10 months, like it does not feel that long at all. But if you are new here, this is my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. I created it from IKEA's glass display cabinet called the Rudsta cabinet. It's not meant to be a terrarium or a greenhouse like this, but I did a lot of modifications to create what you see here. If you're curious about like how I built it and how I put it together, then I would recommend you watch my first two previous videos about the cabinet to give yourself an idea of what I did. Today, we are doing some much needed maintenance like cleaning up the cabinet inside and trimming back the plants and cutting them and stuff. I haven't done much of anything to it in a while, so it's very overgrown and it's in need of some type of manicuring. And I'm also going to be answering your guys' questions. So I asked on my Instagram story if you guys had questions about the cabinet and I got a ton of responses. But first I wanted to talk about changes that I've made to the cabinet. I haven't really done anything to it since my last update video. Um, like I haven't added any plants. I haven't really trimmed anything back except for a couple plants that were like growing way too much. But the one thing that I did change that has completely improved the cabinet. I added a fogger that is sitting above my cabinet. This is the fogger. It's from Reptizoo. It just sits above my cabinet and then there's a pipe that connects it to the cabinet and I just stuck it through the hole that I made for my wires for my lights. It's just made my life so much easier because it keeps the cabinet very humid all the time and I don't have to mist it and water it as often. It's also improved the growth of a lot of my plants and I wish I added this in sooner. I'm gonna give you guys a little rundown of what's going on in here and like a quick little tour. So here is the cabinet as the whole going from top down. Here is the right side and then here is the left side. Because I'm trimming the plants in my cabinet and I'm planning to propagate them and keep them um, and maybe sell them on my website. I have this big bucket of water that I'm going to be putting the plants in as I cut them. In this area, I have a couple of Nepenthes and then I have some Philodendron white, white Princess, I believe, and then some Begonia, some Ferns, some Creeping Fig, another Fern, and then here are some string of turtles. Um, so all of these right here are string of turtles. I'm gonna be trimming a lot of this back, especially these Nepenthes and the Philodendron that have grown up to the top because they're touching the light now, as you can see. Uh, this one has burnt. So let's start answering some of these questions. A common question I got was if I would create another greenhouse cabinet. I have no room at this moment, um, so no, I probably wouldn't make another one unless I had a larger house. This white princess grew way more than I thought. And you can see its roots that it's rooted into the moss. Um, let me try and pull it out. The aerial roots end up rooting into the moss that's on the side panels. Really nice for like propagation and stuff because I can easily just pot this now. These white princess leaves don't really look great here, so I'm gonna trim this plant back. Um, and it's super rooted into the moss now, so just pull this out. Oh my god. Eh. Oops. <laughs> well, okay, I think next time I'm gonna cut the roots. Oh my gosh. So it doesn't completely destroy my cabinet. <laughs> just put that back. This begonia here is probably, I think it, mm, I don't know if it's my favorite plant in here, but it's one of my favorites for sure. Um, it's growing really well in here. The only thing is, is that it is massive <laughs> and it's taking up so much space in this area. So I think I might just cut these ones back on the right side. That way you can see more of this l right wall because it's very nice, it's just completely hidden right now. And what's cool about begonias is that you can propagate them from their leaves. They have like these thick cardboard-like leaves that are different than most begonias and I think it's really cool. What kind of sucks about removing plants though is that it uncovers what's been underneath 
Um, so all of this area hasn't been getting light or water probably, so it looks very dead and ugly. Um, but eventually the moss there will grow back and grow in and cover that area up. Um, I like this white princess here. And then here's my philodendron. Oh, wow, this leaf is still in the way. Should I cut it? Okay, I'm going to cut it. So this is my philodendron Milano chrysum. And what's cool about this plant is that it's always done really bad for me in my regular room home humidity, but in this cabinet, it grows so easily. Normally when I grow it in my home humidity, the new leaves always come out like crinkly and ugly and sometimes they rip or they break. Um, but in here, they grow so well. Um, so I would recommend this Milano Chrysum as more of a high humidity plant for sure just because new leaves emerge a lot better under high humidity okay so this area is my philodendron milano chrysum slash philodendron gigas slash unknown philodendron wall i randomly put a begonia raja leaf here and now it's an entire plant um so i want to remove it but i don't want to rip it out from the wall because the roots are probably attached to my other plants roots so i'm just gonna cut all the leaves off i guess so i do like this plant but it doesn't it doesn't need to be here i'd rather have the focus be on the philodendron instead yeah these leaves are so pretty so i just remembered that i put this orchid here a while ago and it was definitely completely covered up um, so it wasn't receiving any light, and it's been in here for a very long time, um, and I completely forgot about it, but look at it now. But it looks pretty cool. Like a bug wing. Mm-hmm. Like a lace wing. But, yeah, orchid is dead. So I'll just put these dead leaves and stuff in my compost bin. My worm bin. It was difficult for me to read the questions and do this and answer the questions, so Chris is reading some of the questions off to me. So what's the next question? How do you fertilize? So I just added fertilizer at the base layer of the cabinet and I used worm castings and other organic fertilizers. There's not that much substrate on the walls of the cabinet. Um, so eventually the plants that are growing on the wall, their roots go down and reach the bottom layer of the cabinet. Um, so then they can get their nutrients from there. And sometimes I do foliar feed uh, but not that often. So now that this area is done, I'm gonna work on the bottom layer of the cabinet. This area down here is where I have most of my begonia. This begonia is a begonia thelme and it's growing like crazy. And I've trimmed this one back probably the most out of all of the plants. So I'm gonna be trimming this one back and also a couple of these begonia down here as well, just to make it look more manicured and cleaner and more intentional. Because right now it's just like a sea of begonia and we're also gonna be dealing with this um, carnivorous plant soon as well. So what's the next question, Chris? Do you run into any pest problems? So I haven't had any pest problems like spider mites or scale or mealybugs or anything like that. Um, and it might be because I'm very cautious about what I add into my cabinet. Like before I add any plants, I really look to see um, if there are any pests on the plants that I'm adding. So luckily I haven't had any pest issues that are like detrimental to the health of my plants. Oh, so these plants right here, this is Hydrocotyle verticillatica and this is typically an aquarium plant, but I added it into this cabinet. Um, but I think I'm going to remove it just because it grows pretty wild and it looks messy because of the way these leaves bend over and stuff. Chris, next question. Do you have any plants that compete with others for space? What plants grow wild? Like I said earlier, this begonia thelma grows really, really fast and it spreads everywhere. So it's a good plant if you want to fill up your cabinet, but right now my stuff is just so filled in that I don't really need it. And then another plant is this Hydrocotyle verticillatica. It sends out runners and it can really like overtake the space. And because these leaves are so round and like pretty much an umbrella, it ends up shading the plants underneath. So I'm removing this. Um, 
Another plant that's been growing really wild is this Utricularia longifolia, which I am also going to try and trim back. Honestly, everything is growing really fast and really quick. Also, sorry guys, if my hair is coming in and out of the frame, it's sort of hard to set up shots for this kind of video um, to make sure I'm not blocking the shots and stuff. Also, another plant that I added in here that I'm removing is this. It's like a little four leaf clover. I forget the name of it, but I'll put it on the screen. Um, it's typically an aquarium plant, but I put it in here because um, they also use it for terrariums. And I like it because it's a four leaf clover. Like, I think that's pretty cool. Um, and all of the leaves are four leaves but it sends out runners and the stems are very elongated and just looks kind of messy, as you can see, like this. <laughs> I don't know what this plant is. If anyone knows what this is, please let me know. I'm done with this area. I was gonna do this begonia section right now, but it's hard to access them and see what it looks like because of all of this utricularia here. So I'm gonna tackle this section first and then do these down here. Utricularia longifolia, and I love how it looks. Like this is the elevated portion, and it's sort of like a cliff ledge. And I like how it's draping down in this area, so it gives like a draping look, but it's too much. So we are gonna cut these back. I'm gonna start by cutting back these older yellowing leaves, and then we'll see how it looks from there, and then I might remove some of these healthier leaves. So what I like about this plant, but also don't like is how it sends out runners. Like, let me see if I can find you guys some. So like all of these things right here that look like roots, these are all runners. Um, and then they're gonna create new plants. So this Utricularia just started off as a small plant here and it's spread all across the cabinet and it's like everywhere now. Um, so it is cool, but it is just a very large plant and it can take over an area for sure. But I do like it a lot. The next question is asking for a list of all of the plant names. And I will put that either in the description or in the comments because the description has a character limit. So I might not be able to fit all of the names there, but I will add like a name of all the plants and mosses that I'm using in this cabinet somewhere. What's the next question? Do the plants eventually grow into the foam? I don't believe they do grow into the foam. I haven't really checked, but I'm assuming that they don't. Um, but I have noticed that the roots do grow down from the moss and go into the main substrate layer at the bottom. And there's a lot of substrate down here. And that's also where the fertilizer is and where the nutrients are. And there are actually roots that you can see through the glass. Um, I'll actually show you guys right now. Here you can see those roots that have formed in the main substrate layer. I just need to make sure everything stays moist. I don't know what I wanna do with these really long leaves. Like I like how they look, but they're just too long and then they cover up all my plants down here. It's kind of funny that it's called longifolia and I didn't know it would be long because like it's in the name. What's the next question? What kind of moss do you use? I use a mix of sphagnum moss, like live sphagnum moss, and then there's some frog moss in here. Um, and then there's also live sheet moss. So those are the three main mosses. And then there are probably some random ones that have grown in. Um, maybe they came on spores or something that I don't know about because I do see some different forms here and there. I like all of them for different reasons and they give different texture to the cabinet rather than just being like one moss species. Okay, and then how to keep sphagnum moss from drying out. I used to have a really big issue with the moss drying out too much, but then I added my fogger and it's helped me so much because before I would need to mist like every day and maybe even twice a day to keep that moss moist and alive. But now that I have the fogger, it is not as much of an issue and I can go like four or five days sometimes without even misting. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Keep trimming this back. Now it just looks like a sparse, like a mustache or something. In this area, there's just a ton of those runners that are growing out. There's like so many runners here. It's like cutting bangs. It's like, should you go shorter? 
You just keep going shorter and shorter. Okay, I think this is good in this center area. The Begonia Raja is definitely one of my favorite plants in the cabinet. And I went kind of crazy and planted a bunch of leaves that then propagated into a bunch of plants. Um, but now it's a little bit too much and the leaves are massive. So I'm gonna trim these back. Chris, what's the next question? On average, what is the weekly maintenance like? How often do you have to trim it? Yeah, I haven't trimmed this in five months since I did that update video. So you don't really need to trim it often unless your plants are just growing way faster than mine um, and choking out all of your other plants. So the trimming isn't super necessary on like a consistent basis, but for watering and stuff, uh, like I said earlier, my biggest maintenance or like time sink into this cabinet was misting it every day um, to keep the moss alive. But now because I have the fogger, the misting isn't really that necessary anymore. So my maintenance now is like maybe every five days I'll mist the cabinet, maybe every five days again, or every five or seven days I'll refill the fogger. So now that I have the fogger, I just don't have to mist as often because it keeps things so moist. And I've said moist so many times, but I don't know what else to say. Humid? I guess I could say humid. Yeah, it keeps things humid and moisturized. Should I remove more of these leaves? Hmm, I think I will. Okay, what's the next question, Chris? It uh, has three parts. Oh, okay, what's the would first you, part? Would you ever add more livestock? What is your cleanup crew? I remember I did get a lot of questions about like if I would add any livestock or have a pet. I think at this moment, no, just because like, I have a lot of stuff going on right now in my life. Like I'm running the shop and doing social media stuff on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Um, now we also have Theo. Uh, so that's like another life to worry about. And I would love to have like maybe a frog or something in here, but just having something else to take care of and constantly like be thinking about um, making sure it's healthy and has food and I just don't want to put that on myself right now Maybe in the future I will but I don't know the idea of having to feed a frog like Crickets live crickets every week doesn't really sound super appealing to me right now for my cleanup crew It's just isopods and springtails Specifically dairy cow isopods and I think they're called orange powder isopods and I don't really see them that often I only ever see them really when I can see them through the glass through here or in the mornings when I turn on the lights or when the lights turn on and they all like scurry away. But it's not like roaches, you guys. It's not like scary and gross looking. They just kind of like freeze and then they walk away and then they hide into the substrate. I think this area is good. It's a little sparse up here, but it'll fill in and I'll add some live moss here as well. Now that this segment or section is done i'm gonna move on hmm should i do the middle first or the left maybe i'll do the left side first actually i think that sounds more fun right now guys i'm trying to get a good angle but it's really hard because i like i'm trying to show you guys this spot but then where do i put my head i don't know okay i've switched sides hopefully this is better here are all the plants that we've chopped that i'm planning to propagate but I don't know if I'll propagate the begonia because, I don't know, I just have so many of them already. This right side looks a lot cleaner now, especially compared to the left side. This side is just crazy. Here is where I have my Monstera adansonii, so this is a yellow variegated Monstera. And then down here is my Monstera obliqua. And then there's still some Utricularia growing in this area too. One of the main reasons why I set this cabinet up in the first place was because I needed a larger space for my Monstera obliqua. I sent out a really long runner and I let it root into the cabinet on the wall. And then after a while I cut the runners and now I have a bunch of little Monstera obliqua leaves that have sprouted everywhere. I think I'm just gonna clean up the dead leaves first and then go from there. 
Um, Chris, what's the next question? Oh, what happened to Mantis? I don't know if you guys like didn't see, I guess, but Mantis was the praying mantis that I added into this cabinet kind of when I first put it together. Um, she, she passed away or died after about two months or maybe one month, I forget. Um, she was already pretty old when we got her. She had like injuries and stuff, so I think that it was just her time to go. She, or praying mantises also don't live that long. Um, so yeah, I think that she just died of like natural, normal causes, um, which is sad, but I was kind of already prepared for her to pass away. Um, but then I did plant her, or not, I didn't plant her. <laughs> I buried her in my tree that's out on my balcony, my silk floss tree. So she lives on, on my balcony. But yeah, I got a lot of questions about her, so I didn't know that you guys really even cared about her that much, and I also like, I haven't really talked about it that much just because it does make me kind of sad because I did get a little bit attached to her um, even though I told myself not to and I even told Chris, like, don't get sad if she dies, but she did and I think I was honestly more sad than Chris was. <laughs> oh yeah, Chris said that he felt bad feeding her bugs. Um, so I don't know, Chris is a, he's a softie. Not in a bad way, but yeah. Here's one of the obliqua runners that created a leaf and then since I cut those runners my obliqua the main one down here sent out another long runner which actually is all the way right here now um, like it went up the wall and now it's falling down so yeah I'll need to trim that back again and then maybe I'll just plant them inside of the wall and have a wall of obliqua eventually. I do want to bring back my philodendron burl marks fantasy wall because that was my original idea when I put this together. I have this begonia here and I don't know, I just don't really want it here. This is for the philodendron. Sorry. Here is the philodendron gigas that's super overgrown. I think I just put a cutting of it at the top of this cabinet, like right here, because um, I didn't know what to do with it and now it's just this full-on plant. So I'm gonna cut this back at the base. And what's the next question, Chris? What lights do you use and do you have them on a timer? Wow, look at this. It's bigger than I thought. Okay, so what lights do I use? I use the Mother Grow Lights. Um, it's kind of a funny name. <laughs> but yeah, I added them about five months ago. They really made a big difference in my cabinet. Like the colors of the leaves and stuff just look so much better. And I also like that they're waterproof, so I don't, I'm not really scared of like water getting on them and then causing a fire or something. I think that these were like way too close to the light or something. Um, these darker philodendron are more sensitive to light bleaching and excess amount of light, and then they kind of look funky like this. So, ooh, okay, this is like a rotted old leaf. Ooh. And the other part of the question was asking about if I have my lights on a timer, and I do. I believe they're on a timer from seven to about like 7 a.m. or maybe 6 a.m. Yeah, like 6 a.m. to 7.30. And I just have it on a smart plug, so it turns on and turns off by itself, which is really nice. Also right now I'm cutting the Obliqua Peru runners and then I'll probably just like stick them back into the cabinet somewhere. What's the next question, Chris? Um, does it smell better? I think it actually smells very good. Uh, it smells if you've ever been to a conservatory, um, like inside of a big greenhouse, then that's what it smells like. It just smells humid and earthy and like plants. Yeah, so I really like the smell. Like whenever I open up the cabinet, I get a whiff. <laughs> I get a whiff of that like humidity and warmth and I personally really like it. It kind of reminds me of being in a humid place like Vietnam or somewhere in Asia um, or even Florida kind of. So I do like that personally and it's never smelled bad and if it does smell bad then that means that you have a problem. It likely means something in your cabinet is rotting so maybe you have root rot or your soil is anaerobic because you have too much water in it. But yeah, your cabinet should never smell bad and if it does smell bad then you have a problem on your hands. 
So yeah, smell is always like a good indicator of the health of your terrarium or also your aquarium too. So I like how the majority of these leaves here are pressed flat against the wall, um, but this plant is not the philodendron splendid. So I'm gonna cut this portion of the plant back. Okay, um, and then I'll probably, mm, I might cut these roots. Oh, no, I don't need to cut the roots. So what's the next question, Chris? How did you make the walls of the cabinet? What I did was I foamed the sides of the cabinet and then I just put the sheet moss on top of the foam as it was wet. So the foam held onto the sheet moss without me needing to like glue it on or pin it on. Um, so yeah, that's how I created the side walls of the cabinet. If you look right here, you can still see some of the foam. My Burl Marks fantasy wall is back. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Let's try and find all of the Monstera obliqua. So there's one here, and then here is another one, and then here is another one. Um, I don't know if there's any more. They might be hiding. They all just started sprouting leaves like a week ago maybe, and I gave one of them to my friend Jahao. Look how pretty those Burl Marks Fantasy are. They have these leathery leaves, and they also have this really cool venation. I don't know if you guys can see that though, but the color is very unique and it's a cool plant. They do better in terrarium settings for sure though. Here's the runner from my main obliqua, and you can see, actually it's hard to get on camera, but the root, the aerial root, uh, came out of the stem, or it came out of the runner, and it's rooted itself inside of the moss. So what I'm just gonna do here is cut the runner in these locations, and then eventually it'll just become its own plant. And because it's already rooted, it has a little head start. This so is one of my favorite things, is to see roots growing on surfaces. So you have these Burlmorks Fantasy have their roots growing on the cork bark and it's totally attached to it, which is really cool. Now this side is done. I'm going to move on to the middle area. This area is super close to the lights and you can kind of see everything's a little bit more yellow and bleached because of the proximity to the light. Um, so like the moss is a little bit more pale and so are these string of turtle leaves. Looks like a completely different plant. These are super like light bleached because they are so close to the light but these ones are lower and they have a nicer, darker coloration. That's one of the issues that I ran into with how the cabinet is set up, is like the light is uneven. Um, so the ones that are super close to the light kind of get burnt and there's not really a way around it, it seems. I think I'm gonna trim back some of this moss because look at this, it's like, there used to be a lot of these sundew here, but because the moss grew so much, it choked them out and they died. I just wanted to quickly show you guys like the fogger in action. So this is the hose that is connected to the fogger up top. And it just goes through the hole that I made for the wires of the grow lights. Oh, there it goes. I'll use this moss to fill in some of the sparse areas. Um, where I trimmed earlier to fill it in and make it look more lush and vibrant. So what's the next question? How did you, how do you water the plants on the wall? I just spray them with my sprayer. Uh, <laughs> and I try and get the substrate more than just hitting the leaves. So I'll position it in a way that is like, actually hitting the substrate and I will sometimes like push the leaves back so that way um, the water can actually reach the roots. Also because most of the plants on the walls are aeroids, they have aerial roots and they're able to grab onto surfaces and because of my fogger it causes surfaces to get wet because of the extremely high humidity. So they probably get water from that as well. Um, so from their aerial roots um, and the surfaces that they are holding on to. I love cutting moss so much. <laughs> Chris, what's the next question? 
What would you have done differently slash biggest regret? Okay. <laughs> So my biggest regret, which I'm sure you guys know, is that I really rushed into building this cabinet and I didn't look up like how to actually water seal things. So I went in just thinking like, oh, I'll figure it out. And because that's just like my mindset most of the time when getting into things is like, I'll just do it. And then if I run into problems, I'll sort it out afterwards. So my biggest regret is that I did not seal the cabinet correctly. and it leaks just like slightly it's not anything crazy it's just a few drops a day and i plan to get maybe either a shower mat or like an outdoor mat that is waterproof on the bottom i think i've completed this area it looks pretty good it looks cleaner um, now my sundew here can actually <laughs> breathe so now i am going to tackle this area over here in the middle. This area mostly just has string of turtles, also called Peperomia prostrata. If anyone knows, could you please leave a comment? But I would like to know what causes the string of turtles to flower. Like, is it a certain season or like lighting conditions or something? Because um, I don't really like when they flower because you can see there are these like, they're not attractive flowers, they're not really ugly, but they just look a little bit messy. And ideally, I would like to not have these flowers grow. Um, so yeah, if anyone knows, that'd be really insightful and I'd appreciate it. In this middle area, I probably put the least thought into it when I was setting it up. Like for example, the right side of the cabinet and the left side, they kind of have more intention behind them. But in this middle section, I didn't have a strong idea. Like on the bottom, there's the begonias, and then on the top right, there's the nepenthes, and then on the left is my Marks fantasy wall. But here, I didn't have a strong idea of what I wanted to do. I really love how the string of turtles looks here, and how it climbs and crawls and everything inside of the cabinet. It looks so much better in a terrarium setting than it does as a houseplant, I think. Like here, you can really see it for all of its glory. Okay, Chris, what's the next question? Are there any plants you don't recommend putting in? I wouldn't recommend putting in any plants whose leaves size up really quickly. Also, I wouldn't recommend putting in plants that have a more like bushy horizontal growth and don't climb up because that can easily create large shadows over your other plants. Unless of course you want like a very large statement plant, but yeah, I would just avoid anything that gets large quickly. So like Alocasia, Monstera Deliciosa. So I really love this plant, my Ficus Velosa, my hairy fig. It's just such a unique plant and it's fun to touch. Oh, also I just found a little snail. I get little snails in here every once in a while. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I move it over here. So this is called a garlic snail. They just eat the dead leaves of my plants and they don't do much. They're cute though, they're very small. Yeah, this here is a bird's nest fern. And when I first put it in, it was extremely small. It's grown a bit, it's not too large, but I don't know if I really like this plant in here that much. I guess it has a unique leaf shape compared to the other ones at, at least. The next question asked about rust in the cabinet or like deterioration of the metal parts. And I haven't experienced that. Um, it might be because I sealed my cabinet before I even put it together. Like I did a spray, like a water resistant, rust resistant spray on the metal portions of the cabinet. And I haven't seen any rust form at all. In this area it gets really blocked out by this begonia. But here I have passiflora vine and then I also have this Dioscoria discolor, um, but I don't know, they're growing kind of not in a nice way, just a messy way, so I'm gonna trim these back a bit. I think I'm pretty much done. It doesn't look that different, but it does look cleaner. Like it's not a dramatic change, but it looks more organized and less crazy. Here are the plants that I trimmed that I'm gonna be propagating. And there's just like so much 
plant mass in here. And then here are the plants that I'll be propagating, or not propagating, I'll be composting in my worm bin. It's kind of crazy to see it all in this bowl like this. But if you look at my cabinet, it doesn't look that different. So yeah, it's crazy to see how much I removed. I'm done doing the maintenance on the cabinet, but I still have some questions that I haven't answered yet. So I'm gonna go through them and do a quick Q&A style video. Someone asked what was the cost of the materials and how expensive was it? minus the plants. So the Redster cabinet is 150 US dollars. And then the Fogger, I think was like $70. I think I went through like eight cans of expandable foam. I can't remember how much that was, but I'll put it somewhere on the screen. The sheet moss, I think in total, I paid like $30 for all of the dried sheet moss. The live moss, I mostly had myself, but I did purchase some frog moss um, and that was probably around twenty dollars a bag of coco core and a bag of leca total that was probably thirty dollars oh i also purchased some cork bark which i used on the walls of the cabinet and i think the cork bark was probably i don't know i think 25 25 dollars the last thing in here are the grow lights and the grow lights are the most expensive part of this cabinet. So I have the mother LED grow lights and yeah, they're pretty expensive, not gonna lie. Um, but they have a really good build quality and they have a really nice color temperature and they are waterproof, which is like very important um, because you know, you don't wanna start like a fire or something. And it gives me the peace of mind that I'm not gonna cause a crazy accident and burn down my apartment building, knock on wood. Like, I'm not doing all the math in my head right now, but I think I spent around $500 in total to make this thing. Um, there are definitely cheaper ways to go about it. You can probably find one of these cabinets secondhand. Because of the size of the cabinet, it is more expensive than like a smaller terrarium. So if you're on a budget and you're just starting out, maybe try something like this, but with one of the smaller cabinet models or maybe get an actual terrarium or a vivarium from a brand like Exoterra or from Zoomed. Next question, um, have you had fungus, mold, or mushrooms grow in your cabinet? I have had mushrooms for sure. They sprout randomly. I haven't seen them in a while, but they used to sprout like when I first started the cabinet. Um, but I see mushrooms as a good sign, like there's biological activity, and I don't think of it as a bad thing. I had a little bit of mold. I don't even know if it's considered mold, but it was like a white, it almost looked like a spider web over some areas of the cabinet. All I did was physically remove it. And then over time it just went away. Maybe my springtails ended up eating it or maybe the isopods ate it. I'm not sure, but it's not there anymore. So currently I don't have any like humidity or moisture related issues with fungus or rot or mold. That kind of leads me to the next question, which is, do you use fans and how do you ventilate your cabinet? I used to have fans in here, but I removed them because it would just make this top area dry out way faster than the bottom. And I didn't really think I needed the fans because my fans were really cheap and they didn't work that well. So they weren't even really helping ventilate the cabinet. But right now I don't do anything to ventilate it. I don't open up the doors often. There are some gaps and cracks in the cabinet. So there is passive air exchange and airflow and ventilation, but nothing like a fan. Okay, so the next question, how do you prevent plants from growing too large and what do you do if they do? So I think the first thing is just to grow plants in there that aren't gonna get like giant, giant. Like you're not gonna wanna put a fiddly fig in here. And then I'm also propagating them like I did just now to keep them smaller and to maintain their size in a closed container, you just cut them. The next question, what is my favorite plant in the cabinet? I guess I'll say my favorites. My Begonia Kingiana, my Philodendron Milano Chrysum, and then I would say my Monstera Obliqua and my Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy.
Yeah, so those are my current favorites right now, along with all of the moss. So this is the last question. What do you do about plants at the bottom of the cabinet that don't receive as much light? They don't receive as much light, but they receive enough. I try to put plants that don't need as much light, like begonias or dark leaf philodendron, and I also don't want them to grow huge, so I'm not worried about like making sure they have the maximum light absorption happening. I don't think that's a term. Um, but yeah, so they're doing fine. I guess choose plants that are very tolerant of low light conditions. And that's all I have for now. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any further questions, ask them in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.